Okay. The last, uh, uh, well, the last topic on farm, last lecture on farm, we'll look at farm performance, right? Uh, so we'll look at some actual farm curves, farm, actual farm data, okay? Uh, we'll also look at when you what happens when you put pumps in series and pumps in parallel, and we'll. Uh, maybe do an example of a pump and a pipe system. Okay? And finally, I'll give you talk a little bit about the final lab report. Uh. Alright? And, uh, huh? What? What is it? Color screen? What's all? I don't know. I can't. Okay? Any better? Alright? Hey, sell down, please. Okay, so uh, let's see. Uh, okay, this uh, pump performance curve I got off on the Moodle. Okay, edit uh, view, rotate view, clockwise. Okay, so they look something like this. We we'll copy. Uh. Okay, looks right there. All right, so let's just look at this. A bit confusing, alright? But let's just go through this and then uh, there are two other examples. But so, uh, because sometimes, sometimes this graph appears in the exam, so we had better go through this. Okay? So, on the. So, remember I drew the last time the head versus flow rate? Okay? So, there was a curve coming down, and I explained why, alright? At here, it's when your when your flow rate is zero, you have the highest head. Okay, highest head is highest pressure rise across the, the pump. Because no flow actually comes out, it just goes round and round and round. So that's when you get the most centrifugal force, and that's when you get the most pressure difference between the inlet and the outlet. Alright? These are centrifugal pumps, sorry. Uh, and as you let the flow start leaking out, then you 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 don't develop as such a high flow rate. Sorry, you won't develop such a high pressure as okay. So because the, the fluid is not just no longer just going round and round, but rather it's spiraling out. And when it starts spiraling out, it doesn't spend as much time going round, and therefore doesn't spend as much time uh, giving that pressure. Okay. So this is the head pump here. This is head pump. Okay. Uh, and the one you want to use meter, then use this one. Uh. You can ignore this one. Okay? And flow rate Q. Uh, no, please, uh. Flow rate Q. Again, which 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 one unit you like? There's a gallon per minute, liters per second, or meter cube per hour. Alright? So let's say liters per second, then you use this one. Alright? So that is your graph. Here there are five, one, two, three, four, five, five pumps here. Okay? The black lines represent each pump. Okay, now, so this pump is 7.25 in diameter pump. So for this particular model, for this particular manufacturer, okay, I don't know who the manufacturer is, but uh, this is a typical pump plot. Alright? We make uh, many different sizes of pumps. Alright? And instead of producing one graph for each pump, he put, he condensed it, he put five pumps here. So each line is one pump. This is one pump, two, three, four, five. All right now. 
So each of the black lines represent the head versus forehead curve. Alright, so let's say I choose a 9 inch pump. Then I only need to worry about this one. Okay? I only need to worry about this line. Alright now. So if let's say for 9 inch pump, and I want, well that's pretty small. Uh, okay? Uh, and I want say 45, if Q equals to 45 liters per second, alright? Okay, yeah, that's 45. Then I expect H, H pump. Uh, they, here they use capital H. Uh. Wow. But capital, sometimes they use capital, sometimes they use small, it's the same. Okay, H pump equals around 8 meters. Uh. Approximately 8 meters. Is that okay? Alright, so that's for one particular pump. If you choose a different pump, then the curve, if let's say you chose 8 inch pump, then you here and followed by that. Is that alright? Okay, now. Okay, so. Alright, so then the outdoor is other. Is that okay? Can you see now? Yes or no? Alright, so 45. I didn't draw this one dot dot dot. Eh. No, this is wrong. This is about here. About eight, huh? Is that okay? Any questions so, so far? All right. Don't panic with all the other numbers there. Okay. We go through them one at a time. So so far, just focus on the black line because the black line is where the real pump is. All right. The black lines. Each of the black lines is one pump. All the other lines is uh, I'll come to them later, but they are not actually pumps. But they're just lines. All right. So there are five lines. Each of, each of them is one pump curve, right? So you choose the 12, 11 inch pump, you follow the top line. Okay, not so far. All right. The next thing is efficiency. All right. Efficiency is normally m dot gh over omega t. That's the mechanical power in the power to the fluid. All right. That's where all those green lines are. Alright, where the green line intersects with the black line is where your efficiency is. So, in other words, if I'm operating this pump and I'm operating here, then my efficiency is 40%. Okay, now, if I operate at this flow rate, I get 50%, 60 uh, 70%, 75%, 80%, 80-something, 80 uh, I don't know what it is. Alright. Maybe 81, 82, then back to 80% and so on. Why not? So the pump, for each pump, there will be an optimal flow rate that uh, will give you the maximum efficiency. Alright? Basically, flow, to, flow rate too low, your efficiency low because the fluid just going round and round, not actually coming up, the end dot low. Alright? Flow, uh, flow rate too high, yes, you get a lot of end dot, but you don't get much hit. Your hit will drop because the fluid doesn't get enough time to go round and round. So before it goes anything round, it already comes out of the pump. Alright, so the efficiency will drop again. Okay, so here 80%, here 80, maybe 81 or 82, and over 80, 75, 70, 60, and so on and so forth. Right, so it goes to zero. Right? Is that okay? So the maximum efficiency point for this pump is maybe for, I think they call it B. EP, uh, best efficiency point. All right? There are all sorts of names for it. Uh, okay? Uh, best efficiency point, or sometimes they call it design flow rate, or, or, or whatever, optimal flow rate, uh, maximum efficiency. 
and so on. So for this particular pump, it would be about here, lah, say. So it's around. Okay, maybe around. For this particular pump, nine inch pump, your Q is maybe about fifty liters per second. Head maybe slightly less, huh? Maybe seven or six. Six, seven, seven, huh? Maybe seven meters. Is that alright? Are you clear how I read the efficiency? Okay. Uh. You know what they ask? I clear again. Alright? Well, this part is not clear. Okay. So, if not clear, huh? okay, I draw again here. Alright, the palm curve like this. This is Q. This is head. Okay, now. Alright? So, where all those, what those green lines are? Huh? Where those green lines intersect, huh? Something like that. Okay. okay? Each of those green lines got one efficient one, one percentage there, isn't it? Like forty percent, fifty percent. Okay? Where that grid so we are we can only operate on this on this line here. You can see my dot now. We can only operate on this line here. Alright, we cannot there's no there's no such thing as in between here, okay? So where this at this particular point the efficiency is forty percent. Okay? Where this green line intersects with this black line. Okay or not? Alright? Where the second green line intersects with the black line. Alright? At this point, if you operate at this point, because you can only operate on points on the black curve, huh? You cannot operate anywhere. Don't say, oh, I try to operate here or all that. Huh? There's not, no such thing. There's no pump there. Okay? Okay, you can only, if you chose one pump, nine inch pump, you can only operate. If you increase your flow rate, your pressure drop, or your head drop. If you decrease your flow rate, your head rise. Okay, so, and therefore that's why 30%, eh, 50%, and so on. Okay or not? Is that clear now? Alright. Okay or not? Huh? So you have to guess, uh, right? Again, it, it don't need to be. So the question in front here is what? Okay, we're on this black line. Go down for that. All right. Let's say you're operating here in between. So your efficiency is somewhere between seventy percent and sixty percent. Uh, you have to estimate, uh, right? Maybe some linear interpolation, uh, sixty-five or something like that. All right. So. If you're operating in between, that's why here 80%, it goes above 80 and then drops back to 80%. So that's why here I'm estimating efficiency here is approximately maybe 0 0.81 or 82 or something like that. Alright? Is that okay? Or 82%? Okay, okay. Alright, Any questions? Okay. So, I forgot to mention this. Alright, the head is maximum when your, when your Q is zero, isn't it? Alright, this maximum head Sometimes they call that the shut of head. Okay? So that's the maximum. Alright? Any uh, doing operation, the head will be less than that. So that's the maximum. When you shut off, that's the head rise across the pump for zero flow rate. So in this case, 7.25 or 8. Right? So that one is here. It's right here. Okay? Uh, what else, huh? Yeah, 
Uh, efficiency is m dot gh over omega t. Alright? Omega t is a sharp power. Okay? Normally then the sharp, well, the, the speed is already 1180 RPM. Uh. It's, these are all normally for a fixed speed pump. Uh. Pump operating at fixed speed. Okay, that's normally due to the induction motor having a fixed speed. Anything else? Alright, the last thing uh, is, or oh, second last thing, 3, 5, 7.5, 5, 10, 15 watt power. That is the power requirement, right? That's the essentially omega t, all right? Uh, omega t. One horsepower, how many kilowatt? Huh? 0.7. Ah, uh, 0.6 something. Ah, uh. I thought 0.7 something. Okay. Uh, one horsepower is equal to zero point. Anyone know? Ah? Huh? So I thought seven zero seven two something like that. Kilowatt. Seven four five. Okay. All right. And where the green line? Hey, luckily you're doing this one. The other two graphs are all black and white, so it's not harder. Right? Where the green line? Hey, where the green? Where the blue line? Intersects the black line is where your hot power, where the hot power is. Okay, so for this pump again, maybe operating at around here, five horsepower. The other don't don't really intersect, huh? So you need to uh, estimate, uh. All right. So this is a five horsepower line, and this is a seven five five horsepower line, more or less. If you operate below this flow rate, there is somewhere less than 5 horsepower, somewhere between 5 and 3, and operating higher here, somewhere between 5 and 7.5. Okay? Alright? But it's pretty crude. Uh. But yeah, the pump horsepower doesn't change very much. Uh. Okay? So let's say you're operating uh, here, or here, where you want to operate, here or here. Alright? So here is 5 horsepower. Here is 7.5, so we are somewhere in between. Are we one third of the way? One quarter of the way? One. Uh, maybe one third. Uh. So 2.5, one third. Maybe 2.5, one eight. 5.8, maybe. Maybe around 5.8 for 12. Okay. Uh. All right. But you can always double check, uh, all right? More or less. All right? Because, mm, let's say, at BEP, save this always. So you, you're all okay with that? All right? So next one, at BEP, Let's say let's analyze the best efficiency point and that's a good one. So I estimate the power is 5.8 horsepower. You can calculate the power through two means, uh, because they give you efficiency. Alright. Okay. So by reading the graph, you say it's 5.8 horsepower for the 9 inch pump. 5.8 horsepower is 5.8 times 0 0.745. How many kilowatt is that? Someone key in. Alright. At best efficiency point, efficiency is approximately 81%. 0 0.81, which is equal to m dot g h over this omega t. So therefore, omega t is equal to M dot G H over zero point eight one. What's the answer here? Anyone can clear? What's the answer? 
4.3 kilowatt. Alright, let's hope this one get 4.3 kilowatt. Lah. If not, wrong. Lah. Okay? Yeah. In the M dot, this one, huh? Rho times Q. G H over 0.81. Rho, in this case, is the water pump, 998. Q, in this case, at the best efficiency point, Q is around 50 liters per second. That is 50? 50, 55, 60, yeah, 50. Yeah. Right, 50. So 50 uh, divided by 1000 will give you meter cube per hour. Uh, G is 9.81. H is how many? Uh? I said about 7 meters, isn't it? 7 divided by 0 0.81. What do you get? Uh? Hopefully, same. Uh. Hopefully, within 10% of 4.3. Uh. Huh? Oh, 4.3. Okay. Yeah, that's very good idea. Alright. So the data on the graph actually over over specify because we specify both the efficiency and the power. Alright, so from the power, from the efficiency you can actually work out the power. Because it's only what the flow rate is, it's only what the head rise is from the graph. Alright, you can actually work out and the efficiency, you can actually work out the power. But if you are lazy to work it out, you can always look up the graph and look up the graph 4.3. If it's less than 5% or 10%, be happier. You know, looking at the graph is not going to be that accurate, huh? okay? So, and, and I'll be happy also. Like, Alright? If you do that exam, I'll also be happy. Get full marks. More or less. Alright? All right. Normally, if you read in the right in the right vicinity, I'll give you full marks. If you read in the wrong vicinity, then... You know, I try, that, that's why I need to spend time trying, where is this color looking at? Huh? You see, looking at the right graph also, no? Oh. Okay? Because sometimes the, the numbers that come back from the looking at the graph, okay, so it's quite aston uh, astonishing. Okay, so this is the graph. Any questions? Huh? Alright, so there's a, on your, on your Moodle, there's this graph you can play with. There's this graph, which is black and white, harder to play with. Alright? And there's this graph. The, all these graphs actually came out in exam before. So they are passed from past year. In the exam, don't worry, I won't be so blur. Alright? But after they scan back the exam paper and put it on the Moodle, that's why it's so blur. Okay? But if you zoom it up nicely and you print out, eh, it's not so blur. Okay? So this, uh, these are the graphs. Okay, any any questions so far? This is the last this uh we move to the next thing. Alright? So power, so flow rate, head, power, efficiency, all okay, huh? Alright, those are very simple basic ideas. Okay? Uh, now this one not so basic idea. And what is that? And PSH. Net. Something or other pressure. Uh, let me try. Uh, I can't remember, so I had to dig deeper. Net press. Okay. No, for now, though. No. Ah. There. Net positive suction head. Okay. So before I uh, I talk about that, okay. Basically, uh, maybe some smart fellow may want to design like this. Okay, this come out. Uh. All right, and they make this L very long. All right, and then maybe the water down here. Water. Okay. So, will this design work or not? All right. 
Okay. Uh, so you think, oh yeah, okay, okay. the pump will be up. If I put in the energy equation and I put in the flow rate and paint loss, okay, I calculate everything works. Huh? Okay, no? right? Efficiency, everything all will work out. Huh? If you just look at, if you just look at the energy equation and the uh, continuity, momentum, all everything all night, all, all night. Okay, but if you, if you do this, you forget one thing. Huh? What's the thing you forget? What's the thing you forget? So if, yes, you forget the saturation pressure or cavitation okay so basically the pressure here must obviously be larger than the p vapor okay because the pump is meant to pump liquid not meant to pump vapor all right if pump pump vapor there's a different type of pump for that so in this case the water pumps are meant to pump the liquid so you cannot do this type of situation all right you have to move the pump put the pump down here okay all right so, so don't try to put if you build a building 30 floors, don't try to put the pump on the top floor and try to suck the water up. Okay? Put the pump on the ground floor and then the pump the water up. That one will work. Okay? Put the pump on 30 floor, 30th floor, more than 10 ish meters. Alright, and try to suck if there's no work one. Okay? Whereas pump no no floor. And so you can put a lot of pressure here, it will just go up. It's not gonna be part to the reverse, you're okay. Alright. So this one for the okay P larger than P vapor or you can say uh, P over rho G larger than P vapor okay o over rho G yeah. same thing anyway okay but this is not uh, enough okay this is not enough because, uh, well, actually, they also add the dynamic part. But this one plays a small role. V uh. e squared over 2G. This is here. The pressure and the velocity at the first point. Okay? This is not enough. Alright? Because when the liquid enters the pump, alright, the pressure initially will drop first before it rises. Okay? So the pump manufacturer specifies the minimum net positive suction head which is above the vapor pressure okay so in other words this one must be bigger than this one by a certain net positive suction head uh, they put a sub r required so that is the minimum so this has to be bigger than this obviously not get cavitation only all right but you will take a little bit of cushion all right because when the fluid enters the pump and, we, and start swirling the pressure will drop first so not only do we not do we need to make sure that the cavitation does not happen at the inlet but the cavitation does not happen inside the pump if the cavitation happens inside the pump all right it will damage the pump the pump will have very short life okay because you have bubbles uh, vapor bubbles created and then imploding inside there all right it will either damage the pipe the internals of the pump or the pipe and the, the exit and it won't have a lot, uh, it, will, it won't work properly. Uh. It will work for a short while only. So, this one is like NPFH required, is actually the, the, this is like the buffer. Alright, to make sure, buffer to ensure, ensure what? No cavitation. Okay, so that's to ensure that you don't you don't do funny designs like this. Okay, so that's the minimum. All right. I think the the notes have an actual one. Okay. So P vapor, you can, again this P vapor comes from your tables, uh, property tables. All right, depends on temperature okay so that one you look up uh, i think at, at room temperature 25 degrees that p vapor is around 3 kpa or something eh? 23 kpa 23 kpa eh? so high 2.3 kpa eh? 2.6 huh? right okay uh all right 
So if you go back to the notes, I think they, they define one. All right. Okay. NPSH actual must be larger than SPSH required. So this is NPSH actual is equal to P over rho G plus V squared over 2G at the in pump inlet. Inlet of pump minus P vapor over rho G. And this thing obviously must be larger than NPSH. Be quiet. Okay, this whole thing must be larger than NPSH required. All right, so the pump manufacturer will specify the NPSH required. You can calculate your NPSH actual, all right, and then you check to make sure that it's not, uh, all right, that yours is actually larger than that. All right, then, so okay, so check that NPSH actual is larger than NPSH required so that no cavitation get C-A-V-I-T-A-T-I-O-N in pump and pump has long life. Huh? Okay? Any questions so far? Okay, interesting. Huh? All right. So the, the last thing on that curve is that in that curve is the NPSH. So just let's have a look at that. All copy finish. Right. Right. I repeat. I in, cannot read clearly. So so that no cavitation in pump and pump has a uh, has long life. Okay. So on this curve, on this curve, you have those those red lines, isn't it? Alright, so this, again for this curve, depending where you are, which pump you use and where you are operating, alright, your NPSH, the, the minimum changes up. Depends to increase for higher flow rates. Alright, so if you're operating here, alright, more or less, your NPSH required is 7.2, 7.2 watt, huh? I don't think it's meters, huh? I think it's feet. Uh, I think it's feet, now. Huh? Alright? So if you're operating where this line, but except this line doesn't touch the bottom pumps, huh? so you have to extra extrapolate a little bit. Alright? Where, so here, maybe up to here, maybe 8.3, here, 10, 15, 20, and so on. All right? So unfortunately, this curve doesn't, and the SH curve doesn't go down. All right? In some cases, the NPSH curve is a separate curve here. All right? And it actually goes up, I think. Okay? So that's the minimum flow rate required. Sorry, minimum net press. And what the NPSH is, huh? Net pressure suction head required. All right. Hmm? No, I, I this one's a lousy one. Huh? I don't know why it doesn't. Okay. Yes. So example. All right. If it's all right, let's say, huh? 
Let's extrapolate a little bit, huh? Let's just dot dot dot. Okay? So let's say you're operating here. Alright? For your 9 inch pump. So your MPSH required is about 20, 20 feet. Uh. Okay? So uh oh okay. So example, you're operating here. Put the AX. Alright. I don't know space here. So at X and NPSH required is equal to say twenty. Uh. Say twenty, I think it's feet. Uh. Twenty feet. Alright, so therefore uh P inlet over rho G plus V squared inlet over 2G minus P vapor over rho G. This one again, I totally look up the tables for the vapor pressure at that particular temperature. Must be larger than 20 times 1 feet. How many? Uh, 1 feet, how many uh, meter? 0 0.3. Uh. 0 0.3 what? 3 something. Uh. Alright. So, if you got this condition, then you can expect no cavitation. Okay. Uh. Is alright? Okay, any questions that one? So, so, so far that's all the information that's relevant in the graph. Everybody happy or not? Alright, any questions or? Okay, so the final uh, one, since to stop, uh, so we, we look at this one, pump in series and pump in parallel. But let's do an example, uh, alright? Okay, so I think I bought another boy go to sleep. Okay. So Okay. Example. All right, we use that nine inch pump that we just found there, nine inch pump. All right, we put that in a system. All right, first we do it for. Uh, no. uh, okay, so the system looks maybe something like this. Okay, so maybe go water here. Alright, tank one. Okay, it goes through a valve. Uh, at some point, it goes through a tank. Okay. And you want any elbows or not? Yes, one elbow. Okay. One elbow. And then you go to another tank here. Okay. 7.2. Okay. Alright. So, in this case, maybe H2 minus H1. I cannot put too high. Uh. You know, the pump cannot move over here. I can see the head. Maximum pump head also only 
eight or nine meters. Uh. Anyway, sorry. Maximum was only 10 meters, so they cannot put too high. Alright? So even at, at shut off, the head rise across the farm is only 10 meters. Unlikely, if I put a tank higher than 10 meter apart, it's not going to move. You might not see that yet, but never mind. You'll see that soon. Okay, so maybe I put 3 meters. Alright? I put minor losses. KL, uh, maybe 1. 1.2. Okay, there's a pump here. 9 inch pump. Alright, one elbow, KL maybe 0 0.5, and three here, KL 1, and exit here, what's the KL here? Well, that depends, uh. maybe 0 0.7 or something like that. Okay? So the pipe, pipe is The common household pipe is normally half inch, so 25 mm diameter, made of, normally either made of uh, polyvinyl PV PVC, uh, or the other one, the, the, no, not galvanized iron, well, you can make out galvanized iron, uh, you can make out that, that, that bluish plasticky thing, what's it called, HDPE, uh, high density polyethylene. Uh. Is it? Okay. So normally either made of PVC, HDPE, galvanized iron. Okay. This are standard material. Uh. Okay. Unlikely, that if you have chemical plant and the very corrosive stuff and all that, then you have to choose material like stainless steel or, all right. If you are just moving water around, maybe sometimes they use the black pipe, all right, the black steel. Okay, uh, uh, so they are different. Uh. Okay. So which one are you using here? Okay. So uh anybody got brought the textbook along? Uh? What's the relative roughness of PVC uh, approximately? Anybody brought the textbook? Uh? You look that up? It's also in the lecture notes, but I'm, some of you are copying, so I don't want to switch. Huh? I think... What is it? Roughness. Yeah, it's an M. Okay, so from the textbook, your roughness is equivalent to 0 0.015 mm. Okay, for PVC. Okay, don't panic. Uh, exam, if the roughness they will give, uh, they won't expect you to memorize from textbook. Galvanized iron, what number? Stainless steel, what number? Concrete, what number? And so on. Uh. 0.0015 Okay. Uh, what else here? Of course, head pump plus P2 on row G plus V2 squared on 2G plus H2 plus head loss plus head turbine. What can we say about P1 and V1? P1 and P2? Same. V1 and V2? Zero. So I start at the tank and the tank, so zero. Okay or not? So, this simplifies to, if, if it's not zero, then it's not zero. Okay? Then, what I'm going to do is move it to the right-hand side. Head pump, yeah, hey, I didn't. I forgot to specify. Yeah, huh? total length of pipe. How long do you want the pipe to be? I thought too long. The pump pump cannot move. Ah, huh? put it. Uh, for, put forty meters. Ah, huh? right. I hope the pump can move. Ah, huh? 
Okay? H pump is equal to H2 minus H1 plus head loss is F L on D. Huh? What is it? V1 is at the start of the tank and V2 is at the end tank. So in the tank, there's no velocity. Okay? In the pipe, there's velocity, but in the tank, there's no velocity. So this is the surface of the tank. Right? So the streamline will go something like this. Uh. Go down here. Yeah, pressure same because they're both atmosphere. They're open tanks. Okay? And I should, should I should draw the triangle here, atmosphere. Free surface. Yeah, you can do it. Okay. F L on D plus sum of K L D squared on two G. Alright. Equals no that's all. No turbine so this one gone. Okay, so this is your pump. This is your system. Okay? So pump curve manufacturer gave to you this, no problem. So system curve, let's, let's do a few points. Uh. Alright, let's do four points, hopefully enough. Okay? What flow rate huh, should we do? Let's do 15, 30, 45, 60. Uh. Let's, hope, let's hope we intersect. Uh. Okay. Okay, gamble here. Yeah. Okay. So, for the system, alright, first, I set the Q. All right, I go 15, 30, 45, 60. After I set the Q, all right, the pipe diameter fixed at 25 mm. You can find the M dot, eh, the velocity, correct or not? All right, after you find the velocity, you can find rho, V, D over mu, you can find the Reynolds number. After the Reynolds number, you can find the friction factor. After a friction factor, you can put it in and you can find the H system. Okay? So, don't expect the fun fella to do all, all for you. Huh? Share, share a bit. Huh? So, this side, do 15. This middle here, do 30. This other half, do 45. And this end, do 60. Okay? I forgot one thing. Uh. E over D is equal to what is it? Uh? 0 0.0015 divided by 25 uh. mm. Here also mm. So they cancel out. Okay? So when you're calculating roughness, make sure that if your top is mm, bottom also must be mm. Uh. Top is cm, bottom is cm. So they cancel out. <laughs> Alright? I'm hoping it, 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 it. I'm hoping that the system actually intersects somewhere. Else. Okay, so velocity is uh, Q over A. All right, Reynolds number is rho V D over mu. Friction factor. We need to look up the Moody chart. I'll bring up the Moody charts shortly. And H system, well, that's this whole equation here. H2 minus H1, I say it's what? Huh? 3. 3. L is 30, 40. D is 0 0.025. KL, sum of KL is what? Huh? 0.7 plus 1.2 plus 0.5 plus 1. What's that? 1.5, 1.3, 3.4. 3 correct or not? Okay. Eh, the valve, correct. Yeah, correct. Mm. Uh, 
Uh, this is water, so rho is 998. Mu is 1.2 by 10 to the minus 3. Newton second per meter square. This one is kilogram per meter cube. Alright. Flow rate is actually liters per second. Liters per second. So you need to divide by 1000 to get you meter cube per second. What's the velocity? 15? Huh? What's the velocity at 15? What's the velocity? What's the speed? The velocity 30.56. Wow, so high. Ah. Maybe I need to increase the diameter. Now, I doubt it would, uh, the head would be, be extremely high. Ah. So you need a small pump. Uh. Is it correct? Uh? Yeah, 15 is 13.56. Huh? At 30 is what? Hmm. So is it double that? Uh? 30.56 meters per second. I think it's all. Uh. Yeah, read the pump correctly. Yeah. I think maybe cannot. Uh. Alright, sorry. Uh, I, don't, I think you, you, the, whole plot, the whole thing will mess up with that one. Maybe double the pipe. If we double four. Twenty-five mm. Yeah, correct. If we double this, you get, you get four times. Four times. Also very big. Eh? I don't know. Maybe make it seventy-five. All right. That kind of speed will not will not likely work. Eh? Yeah, make it seventy-five. Eh? The the diameter is seventy-five mm. Eh? So factor of three, so we reduce by factor of nine. Uh. So thirty will be, uh, huh? For which one? For which velocity? Fifteen, how many? Three point four. Also quite high, but anyway, this one. So this one should be double that, uh, Six point eight. All right, this will double that. Twelve point thirteen point four. 16 13.6 this one 9 9 9 10 10.2 okay Two one two zero seven five. Two point one times ten to the five. Is that right? So by right this one should be four point two by ten to the five. This one be six point three by ten to the five. This one be eight point four by ten to the five. Okay. Alright, relative roughness is what? This. 
Point oh oh one five divided by seventy five. What do you get? Zero point oh 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 two. Is that right? Okay. So save here first. Remember all these numbers. So we have about two hundred thousand, four hundred thousand, six hundred, eight hundred thousand. We need to find the F. Okay. So we go to the Moody chart. Where's the Moody chart? All right, so point O. So we're somewhere between here and here. Okay. All right, our one is zero. Zero point zero 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 two. Is that right? So ours is somewhere here. Here is one, here is five, so two maybe like that here. Okay. Okay, and it goes join together. Two actually it doesn't matter lah. By, by the time you're at two hundred thousand, all right, your F is about here. Four F is about here. Six F about here. Eight F about here. Is that right? So, first one is around point one. 0.16 ah, 0 0.016 right 0 0.016 second one is around 135 uh, third one is around 0 0.013 ah. fourth one 12 ah. Okay. Is that right? Small less lah. Uh. If you are reading around there, plus minus a bit, uh, in your exam, that's okay. I know, I know you can. Maybe you guys had a lot of coffee the night before, or your hand shaking, or your sweating, or any other, other problems. So I accept that you won't be so accurate uh. Okay. Or some people complain the 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 invigilators keep on bugging them. The invigilators keep on bugging you, ah. Okay. Hopefully that doesn't happen, ah. Okay. How to get out of here? And show. Is that agreeable, all? All right. Uh, okay, is that all agreeable or not? Alright? If you go back home and try it, alright, and then you don't get what you mean, you can come and discuss with me. Alright, but here's 0. Point, what's the number? 016. 0. 0.0135. 0. 0.013. 0. 0.012. Okay? Then after that, Put it in here, calculate the H system for the four numbers. Again, don't, not the same person calculate all of them. Alright? Uh, Today I must plot, So I plot nicely, yeah.
So here is 0, here is 15, here is uh, 30, here is 45, here is 60, here is maybe 75. 1, 2, here maybe 2 meters, here 4 meters, here 6 meters. This is Q in liters per second. This is head. What's the answer? First one is what? 10. Huh? First one 10 already. Hmm. Second one? Huh? 28. Oh. Second one 58. Ah. Third one 58. Too high like, numbers. You never intersect the pump curve at this stage. Third one hundred eighty eight. Four four. Hmm? Yeah, they are not too high. Eh? How to look, how to reduce it? So first point here. Already. Okay, pump curve. Pump curve, let's say I use 9 inch pump at 15 is around 11. 8, 10, about 10. Alright, so the pump curve will look something like this. Pump curve at 15 is about 10. At 30 is about 4, 8, 9, 10, maybe 9. Uh. At 45, 45 is about 8, and at 60 is about 5, 8 and 5. Okay, so this is the pump curve. All right, and yeah, so I asked for the echo. Tougher bit, All right, uh, this is really the higher. Yeah? Correct, yeah? huh? Ninety-five. First one ten. Correct, yeah? Second one, huh? Twenty-eight. Uh, so the system curve. Sorry, I like, go select. Okay? So, no, no, I was hoping it, it didn't do that. Any, any, any. Anyway. Okay. So, uh, and then it goes up. Uh, anyway, I plotted it up to scale. Alright? But, this one, very hard to see. Okay, I'm sorry, maybe the scale no good. Let's plot different scale. Huh? Yes. Uh, maybe here. Pay four. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty. Okay. So the first. Palm dot. What did I say was? Huh? First one was at, at zero is what? Huh? First one was ten. At zero is what? Huh? I forgot. At zero 
Uh, maybe 12 hours. Okay, 12. At 30 is how many? Huh? 30 is what? 30 is 9, is it? 30. I think 9, 8, and then 5 or something like that. 9, 8, and then 5, 4, 5. Yeah. Okay, so that's the pump curve. So 10, alright, more or less. Alright, that's from the pump, 9 inch pump. Okay, so the other one was uh, first one, 15 is how many? 10. Okay, so 30 is how many? 28. So maybe halfway, 15 to 30, 28, 10 to 20, 14. Maybe halfway, about 24. Maybe like here, lah. okay? This is the system. All right? Okay, so that's the pump curve. And when you intersect, if you just put one pump in the system, that will look like that. All right? But you can choose to put a pump Let's say Christine here, so expect flow rate around 15. If this flow rate not adequate, you can choose to put pump in series or pump in parallel. So what I mean here is here, this part here, pump in series means I replace that one, one pump. Okay. One pump. So the system curve remains the same, huh? System is still the system. Okay, uh, the green case, I put I just draw liner. Okay. So the pipe goes into two pump. Okay, so this is pump in parallel. What do you expect the pump curve to do when the pumps are in parallel? All right. For the same head right across the. All right. So same like pipe in series. Okay. Same like pipe in parallel. Maybe parallel or, or series. Maybe do the, the in series one first. Huh? That one easier. Easier to explain. Okay, so instead of one pump to two pump. So what that does for the same amount of flow rate, the head rise across the first pump and then the head rises across the second pump. So you expect here at zero is 12. Across the two pumps, you expect what, what do you expect? 24. Yeah, maybe 24. Okay, all right. So for the same flow rate, in case case zero, at zero the head rise across one palm is twelve meters. The head rise across two palm twenty four meters. Okay, all right. So at fifteen the head rise across one palm is ten meters. The head rise across two palm is twenty meters. Okay, all right. And then thirty the head rise across one palm I think is uh, nine. 9 times 2 is 18. 18 will be about here. Okay? And 45. Uh, 45 is what? Huh? 8. 8 times 2 is 16. In my numbers, a bit wrong. I? I, hope, I hope the concept gets through. Huh? Okay? Alright, and at 65, 5 times 2 10. So 10 about here. Okay? So, this is uh, what color was that? Huh? Just now? Indigo. Huh? Alright? This is original or, or one palmer. Alright? Here, this intersecting point here, two palms in series. Alright? Maybe I should color code it. Red. Okay, so that alone already has increased the flow rate. 
So from 15, I don't know what it is now. Okay? My graph not that good, I cannot really contribute now. Maybe 20 or something. Alright? <coughs> Maybe you're plotting nicer graph. Alright? You do well, you might be able to get what. Okay. Is that alright? Okay? So pump in series, yes, the flow rate will increase. And the power putting in also increases like doubles. Uh, Alright? And that's the new uh, performance point. Okay? Uh, pump in parallel. Uh, okay. Pump in parallel. The head rise across the one pump. Green. Pump in series, all okay, huh? Any questions? This is red. Pump in parallel, this is green. Okay? The head rise is the same. But the flow rate doubles. Okay, right? Alright? So the head rise across one pump is, say, 10 meters. Across two pumps will also be 10 meters. 10 meters across the first one, 10 meters across the second one. Correct, right? Right, but the flow rate doubles. So, original one pump here, you expect this curve here at well zero double of zero is still zero, so no surprise there. All right, double of fifteen is actually thirty. It's over here. Okay, and double of uh, thirty is sixty. So here eight nine nine will be here. All right, and this double of uh, right. so the the curve will go something like this. All right, I can't double anymore. All right, and then there's also another new intersection point here. All right, that is Q for pump in parallel. Okay. Is that alright? Okay. Hmm? Alright, so from here it looks like power in series will increase. Okay, it depends on the particular problem, but in this case it looks like power in series will increase the flow rate more. Alright, if I plotted the graph already. Alright? You okay? Uh, are you clear how I got the pump in parallel? All right. So the head rise across one pump, the, because they're in parallel, the pressure at this point is the same as the pressure at this point. So the head rise across one pump and the head rise across the second pump. Well, if they are two identical pumps, so that's the same. All right. Just that you get twice the much flow rate. So for 15 meter head for this pump, you get also same 15 meter head, but the flow rate across one pump must add together. That's why. From 15, added to 30. And from 30, I added to 60. Okay? Alright, so, uh, that's how you do a problem. Okay? You first, so for a pump uh, piping system problem, you need to plot your pump curve, and then after that, plot your, sorry, plot your system curve, and then plot your pump curve. And then normally the question will ask, what have you, you know, uh, this is a more higher level question. Uh. What if you add a pump in parallel or what add a pump in series? Then make you think a little bit and answer. Normally, no, no many can answer that one. That's why I took the time to do this one. Uh. Alright? I didn't do this just to torture you. Alright? Okay? Any, any questions? You clear about this? Right. Okay, safe. Sorry, I'm running a bit slow. The last part, I talk about the prep. Okay. Do you have any questions? This one. All right. So the prep. Anyone got prep handout? Huh? All right. Be before that one, uh, I'll let you finish copying first. Anyone got prep handout? Huh? Oh, I have to make an announcement. Huh? For the pipe flow experiment, the diameter printed in your uh, lab handout is wrong. Sorry, the length printed out in your pipe handout is wrong.
All right, the length is 425 mm. This is for high flow rate. Remember you doing the, the, the pipe experiment quite a while ago, no? The pipe flow one. You had the low flow rate one, the one where the water was flowing down the vertical channel and then using a water manometer. Can you remember? All right. And for the high and then for the high flow rate one, the water was flowing down a horizontal pipe and then there was two mercury columns going up and down. All right. So for the high flow rate one, uh, the low flow rate one, the length is is okay. For high flow rate one, the L is 425 mm. If your diameter is either 4.48, 4 7.74, or 10.2 mm. Okay? You only did one pipe, so I hope you written down which diameter you did. If you didn't written down the diameter, then it's a bit difficult. You have to guess. Alright? Uh, L, so this one is, is equal to 325 mm mm if your diameter is 4.8 7.7 and 10.2 mm this this company uh, i bought the first one he supplied me the pipe for 4, 4, 4, 4 to 5 mm i bought the second ring he supplied me 5 mm okay. I don't know. Yeah, you that one. <laughs> right, where's the 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 Amphil one, the, 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 the one I bought also a few years apart, they gave me the same thing. This one, I don't know, they happy happy one time, make 425 mm. Okay? So depending which diameter you did, alright, if you did on this way, alright, with this diameter pipe, the pipe diameter is also different. Alright? With this diameter pipe, then your, your length is this one. If you did with this diameter pipe, then your length is this one. The one that published in the lab with uh, handout was 425 mm. Okay? So please make that note. That correction. All right. Second, I I gave a lot of feedback. All right. I took a lot of time to give you all that feedback in your lab report. Uh, so please do read it. All right. It's not just look at the mark and then put on site. It's for you to take corrective action so that your next lab report should be a little bit better. Uh. All right. So uh, things one, things that most of you got wrong was. Okay, it's not it's not theoretical results, uh. Okay. Uh, there, there are no theoretical results in most of these cases, uh. So the pipe flow, so don't talk about theoretical results, uh. The Moody chart is actually based on, uh, based on earlier experiments. Okay. All right. So the, so public, I put a published results based on earlier experiments. Okay. Uh, and I think some, a lot of you, but this one also relevant, you said losses neglected. Uh, that's not wrong. Uh. Okay? Losses are ne neglected only for Q ideal. Q ideal, yes. But CQ, no. And you're comparing the CQ. Uh. So your, you cannot say losses were neglected, but you must say why your losses could be different than the lo losses in those published data. All right? So, not neglected. So, overall, that one uh, showed a lack of knowing what you're, you're doing if you think losses neglected. Uh, generally, I gave a lot of comments, especially the abstract introduction. All right? So, please be clear how to write abstract introduction. They're on some are okay, some are right. The other thing, ah, uh, quantify. So I hear a lot of words like, or oh, it's within, it's without, it's outside the range, it's within the range, and so on, uh, or it's close, or it's not close, or it's very far, and so on. So it's important this one, you engineers, you know, you cannot say, oh, yeah, it's about there. Okay? Uh, you need to quantify. So if it's about there, then you say it's about, say, within 5% or something like that. Okay? If it's very far, let's say it's more than 50%, so it's a bit better, it's not all right? So quantify the, the differences. Differences. In comparison. All right, so later on also we say, oh, it's, 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 it's good result, it's no good result. Right? What is good, what is no good, I don't know. 
Some people ten percent is good. Some people ten percent is no good. So you need to quantify what the, and then you can comment on that. So quantify, quantify. Don't just say near, far, all those uh, the differences. What else? Huh? Uh, okay. And uh, this one is the hard part, lah. And anything else? I need to... All right. The hard, the hard part is finally. If you want to, uh, a good report, good. Uh, all right. Okay. So this one will take a bit more time, but if you say so, you say say error. Is that say example uh, There's so many error, but I just take one. Let's say parallax. This is error like right parallax error. Okay. You can say yeah, there's parallax error, but it 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 leaves the story hanging there. If you don't actually relate what the what the magnitude of that parallax error is, so let's say parallax error, you look at it, the, the 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 scale, you can maybe up down, you can estimate lah. Parallax error maybe plus minus three mm, say, okay, two mm, say two mm or three mm, up to you lah. All right. So on both sides you can add, add parallax error lah. So the the, the the whole h two minus h one you can add. so h two minus h one got uncertainty of maybe. 5 plus minus 5 mm. Alright? So, if you want, you can actually carry that 5 mm through your calculation and show what it actually results in. Alright? So, in other words, dot dot dot. Okay? This, I, I'm using the old one, but you can use the new one. So, previously, let's say your, your, for that particular result, your CQ is 0 0.6. With the effect of parallax error, that one, that could reduce to 0 0.59 and 0 0.61 or something like that. Do, when you if you deviate this by 5 mm, this one will go down, it go up. Alright? It could it could also affect your results on the scale. So maybe if you plot on your graph, then you can you know your parents error could be something like this. Alright? Could move the, the could, that's a like error bar or uncertainty. CQ versus RE. Alright? And then after that Based on that, and then your comparison, and hey, hang on, my comparison still outside, all right? That the, in other words, the my graph is here, the actual uh, published results graph is maybe over here, all right? Then you can say, hey, hang on, can't be parallax error, must be something else, all right? So I don't expect you to do it for everyone, but at least do it for the few that you think are the big sources or error. Example is maybe you say human reaction time, so you can put that. But can't be that bad, huh? I'm not. I'm not old man. So plus minus two seconds or three seconds and see what effect that is. So it changes the random sample. All right. So that's if you want a good. Uh, all right. That's why I didn't give many more than eight, lah. Yeah. A lot of you guys more or less. You know, some some were reasonable and some were bad, but not like that. Yeah. Okay. So. Basically, the marking scheme 8 and above HD is for outstanding. Uh. It's, uh, so, it can't give you outstanding if you just do what everyone else do. That's not outstanding. That's... Alright. Uh, okay. A any questions so far? Alright. So, the final one. Uh, let's try it before 7. Uh. It's, still, it's still like outside. Alright. So, final one. Anyone let that hand out? Okay. Okay, so basically this experiment, first part asks you to plot Moody chart, isn't it? Okay, so basically find your F. Delta P on rho G is equal to F L on D V squared on 2G. Is that right? That's all it is, isn't it? Okay. You can show this, uh, but for the experiment, that's all it is. Uh. I think so, yeah? All right, because there's nothing else in there. There's no minor losses, no accessory, pump, so on. Even, all right, you can show. All right, I won't show, but for the vertical column one, all right, the, the height difference actually cancels out by the, manometer, by the water manometer. All right, so although that one, some might say, hey, hang on, inlet here, outlet here, there's height difference. 
but that height difference actually cancel out by the manometer. Okay? So in other words, it's still this one. Okay? Alright, but if you don't believe you can do the, the manometer equation, it will show that it actually comes back to this one. The height difference due to the height difference between point one and point two, the two measuring stations in the vertical column, is cancelled out by the manometer. Alright? So you can you you end up with this one, right? If you don't, if I made a mistake, please please check, you know, show this. Okay? So you need to plot F as a function. So for each data point, you can find F. L is given, D is given, B squared, well, B is equal to Q over A, and Q is given. Alright? So for each data point, you can plot F. Is that right? For both, so find F for low and high flow rate. Okay? Save. And then finally, on your Moody chart, maybe I close and open again. Let's see. All right? You will plot something like this. Okay? How we plot, huh? So the low one, Okay, I put uh, this one. So this one is for low. Okay, so you'll get some data like this, hopefully. And then hopefully here it will rise up and then you might get one or two points here. Alright, that's for your low data points. And then you can comment. Uh, it should it should fit nicely with theory, hopefully. Alright, if not, you can see why. And for the high flow rate one, I put a box, high. Doesn't write that well. Okay, so you might get some data points here like this. All right, so that one you can then estimate P on D for five you use. Okay, hopefully it's above here. Last year, I think some fellas were down here. That's because I, I think I didn't correct the the, the, the di length, length. That's why they were here. So I, I hope this year there's no one down here. Okay. So it should be either a smooth pipe or a little bit above the smooth pipe. Okay. Then you can comment on that, whether it's a smooth pipe or not. Okay. So that's the first part. Okay. All right. And then the second part. The second part, you are supposed to assume. Well, you can assume F is 64 over R. So you take your part two, take data, hopefully you got at least four or five, all right? Data in laminar range. All right? So, example, in this case, oh, this one's still okay, actually. That is. All right, those that are still more or less following this line, you take that data and use to find mu. I know. Okay. Keep. All right. Part two is you take that data. Oh, you can see. All right. You take the data in the laminar range and you use that to find mu. That's the formula for me, huh? I think right. right. Anybody got textbook? Uh? I, I give you the I just write the formula so that you know, so that you can go and get anybody textbook. Right. Actually I actually showed uh proved it in the class a few weeks ago. But uh, again, again you can read up the textbook and then do the derivation if you like. But uh, Okay, where is it?
Oke. Okay. Uh. Oke. Okay. Halo, Rikit. Alright, so finally, you end up with some equation that looks uh, alright, something like this. Delta P for laminar flow. This is equation 8.33. Delta P equals to 32 L on D mu V mean over D. Well, it's just V. Yeah. Alright? Okay, so if you plot There are a few ways you can do it, but easiest if you just plot delta P versus V. Okay, you get and you plot these points lamina range only. All right, the gradient here. This gradient should be 32 L on D. B, eh? I got this B on D and then D again. Right, D squared. 32. 32 L, mu. Alright, so from here, you can find what estimate your mu. Alright, and then compare with tables. With property tables. Okay? Uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention, huh? this one, when you're calculating your Reynolds number, all right, here, can you copy this part or not? The final thing I have to say, when you're calculating your Reynolds number, RE is equal to rho VD over mu. This mu, use temperature, And temperature and what? Huh? And uh, the property table. Okay, I'll save this. All right. So when you use the when you for calculating mu, you use the temperature and the property table because the mu will change quite a lot when depending on the temperature. Rho not so much. That's why this, in this one you mentioned the temperature. That's why the temperature is used. All right. The temperature is used to work out mu. So for the Reynolds number. For this part, the F, that one, you don't need any new. Okay? Alright? Okay. Any, any questions? So you do this for each uh, experimental value. Alright? Oh! And don't put all the tables and all the working in your main report. Right? That one can put in the appendix. Alright? The main report should have the results. Some, some, some of you the results in the main in the, in the appendix and then the, all the, the secondary stuff in the main report. That, that's not right as well. Okay? So what is right is minimum main report should have the Moody chart plot and your this graph plot and then the results. All right, the actual all working, your data tables, all that, high road tables and uh, raw data and all that, put the panic. No, actually, I don't want to see unless there's, I see, I, I don't want to see unless there's something major fun, funny in your results. Uh. Okay, that one I assume you can get correct. Uh. All right, that, any questions? No, we'll, we'll end here. Sorry, delay by 18 minutes. When this report due? Huh? Uh, huh? Next week. Next week? No, next week. I think week 12. Yeah.